Great. My name is Stephen Ford and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> wrong meeting. Thank you. So, uh, yes, wrong meeting. So, my name is Stephen Ford. I'll start again and I'm a closet greenie. I don't think that also is uh, as well. Anyway, I'm a uh, plant pathologist. I'm a founder of a company called Equilibrium Biologicals. Um, uh, I sold my first company to Syngenta in 2015 and spent two years in the wilderness and then thought uh, in 2018 that I will start another one and uh, consequently that company has just received significant investment from one of the multinationals that I can't tell you about but you'll find out very shortly. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about slugs and uh, and some of the products, all of these products are commercial, they're registered, um, they're commercially available overseas as well as here in New Zealand and they're kind of taking the market uh, by storm, especially the, uh, the T. Saffinan. Um, currently it's actually in France controlling a little snail, over 700,000 hectares in the uh, Bordeaux region. Um, so the product is called Slugum and it's a naturally occurring T. Saffinan that you can spray and uh, works, uh, um, and as I don't have a lot of time to actually move through you know, the entirety of how it works, um, it's a fermented uh, tea saponin from Camellia sinensis, so a cup of tea, effectively. Um, and this is how it works. So what it does is it actually removes, it interrupts the mucous membranes on the outside of the slug and effectively uh, turns it into a mucilaginous gel and uh, the slug tears off its own mucous membrane. Um, very attractive um, if you want to, uh, if uh, you're a slug. So this is how it works. So this is at the field concentration of five mils of product per litre. Um, two litres per hectare is, and it's a very, very competitive price-wise. So you can see there the slug is um, being dipped into the product and uh, as it's being filmed it's tearing off its own mucous membrane. So there's a lot of benefits for actually removing that mucous membrane. So the uh, slug itself begins to dehydrate, it can't regulate its own um, sort of water holding capacity and um, its own moisture so it actually begins to rapidly dehydrate. Um, the uh, mucus that's around the outside of the slug if anybody's wondered why slugs don't fall over to uh, fungal pathogens in the soil and bacterial pathogens, is that actual that material is uh, this mucilaginous gel that's left behind. The mucus itself is actually quite antimicrobial, so it prevents the slugs from actually uh, getting infected with uh, common sort of par um, parasites and things that you would expect them to fall over to. And the other thing too is that uh, it's also very bitter. So birds don't actually attack slugs um, because um, it's very bitter and they tend to be repelled away from it. So once you've removed it, it opens up to bird predation as well. So, um, so one of the other uh, incredibly important things about it is that it is, um, uh, is a very high degree of uh, repellency. Um, the first name for the product was called Hotfoot. Um, because slugs and snails, they just won't go anywhere near it. So once the product is sprayed um, over the crop, it will stay uh, persistent on the crop for about 14 days. Um, it's already very slippery. It's already got a Dray's wetting of almost uh, an organosilicon. Um, a lot of growers will actually, actually mix it um, with other pesticides um, as a surfactant. Um, and it's uh, incredibly slippery. Uh, slippery. So you've got a very, very strong repellency in New Zealand and overseas. It's registered um, and it has absolutely no withholding period. So whereas you know, a lot of the methyl carbon and, and, and metal axle um, products that, that are in the market actually you know, require some withholding periods that you have to be concerned about. Excuse me, what kind of effect does it have on earthworms? Uh, none. So they can... So, so it's, so, uh, to, and to be very honest about it, we've done a lot of work on earthworms. Um, Grain keepers actually use uh, a saponin or a type of very, um, uh, a surfactant to actually kill earthworms. Um, at the rates that we would have to use this, we'd be looking at, um, you know, 50 or 60 litres per hectare to actually control. We've actually had some green keepers ring up and say, can we test it? And we just won't allow the product to go out for that purpose. So. 
Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into all the data and things because I just don't, don't have enough time. Um, but one of the things is it is available. It's the only registered liquid uh, sprayable uh, tea saponin product globally. Um, why somebody else? I mean, the Asians have known about tea saponin control of mollusks for, for, for many, many, many years, thousands of years. Um, but we seem to be the only clowns that have gone ahead and registered the product. So, um, uh, yeah. So, one of the other things that we're doing at the moment is a product called Dawn. This is also available from Farmlands. Um, and uh, it is a iron chelate. Does everybody know how an iron chelate controls a slug? So slugs and snails, to actually move oxygen around their body, they actually use copper. So as a human being, we use iron um, to actually move oxygen around our bodies. And the uh, slugs and snails, if you're a mollusk, they use copper. So when we introduce iron into that equation, the iron actually repels the copper and the slug um, can't actually uh, oxygenate itself and becomes highly anaerobic and then carts it. So uh, that's, that's how it works. So um, we also don't extrude our baits. So all of the baits that we use are a coated process. We're one of the only coated processes in the world and we use a dolomite granule of a very specific grade um, and then we coat up the iron chelates and the attractants um, to actually bring the slugs in and uh, very, very competitive, ballistically superior to everything else that's on the market. So that's, we've done all the um, uh, spreading trials. Um, and you can see here that you know, methiocarb has already been banned from the market because of its toxicity, and metal axle is actually under review, um, and uh, has been looked very unfavorably globally. And so hence why we've built uh, an iron chelate product and a coated product. Um, it's environmentally very stable. A lot of the, the issues with, with a lot of um, uh, the extruded pellets, as you can see, is they suck up water like wet bits. Um, and they tend to fall apart very, very quickly. Um, and of course, that is uh, uh, curtains for the control of the product. They also tend to leave behind some very toxic residues, whereas we're only leaving behind iron magnesium and, um, and calcium. Does it affect any beneficials? No. No, we've done quite a lot of... Um, Nothing to arthropods or anything? No. no. So, um, and, uh, and as, uh, and I certainly concur with what Alison's saying, is it's data, 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 data. If, if the person standing in front of you can't show you very, very good field trials over many field trials, then don't take the product. Um, and we want one of them. So effectively, if we look, to look at the cheat sheet, um, before I get uh, Nigel involved, it's just, you can see the active ingredient in Slugum is 212 grams per litre of a tea saponin, so that's a very purified extract. The active ingredient of Dawn is 54 kgs of iron chelate. So both non-toxic to mammals and have very, very good environmental profiles. Um, so the formulation uh, is uh, for the slugum is a soluble concentrate and this is a granular bait, so a coated bait. We actually use a lot of technology to actually coat this bait uh, from the confectionery industry. So we use copper bowls just as if there's any seed coaters in the room um, and in a very, very similar process to actually building up and coating seed. Um, targets are obviously mollusks, slugs and snails. Um, you've seen the way that the mode of action is um, in actually removing the slime layer and the iron displaces the copper to uh, ensure that the uh, slug isn't able to oxygenate itself. Um, registered crops, lettuce, strawberries, fruit trees, again high value horticulture but uh, we've been doing quite a lot of um, uh, testing on application rates mainly to actually bring down um, the rate per hectare and we've been very successful from seven kilos upwards um, in the Dawn product and uh, about two litres per hectare for the uh, sprayable slipping product. Um, so with uh, nil withholding periods, which, which is uh, very important um, 
for growers these days in, in a zero uh, residual environment that the public is asking us to achieve. Um, earthworm safety, possible harm. Now we just being honest there, if you get up to 50 or 60 litres per hectare, then you will cause, cause harm, but because you're applying between two and five litres per hectare, you're well below um, the, the threshold of causing harm. Um, so biological insect safety, we've done a lot of um, host range testing and off-target uh, testing to ensure that we just don't do an environmental harm. We can't sort of be a green company and be a bunch of closet greenies um, and actually go and do more harm than what we started off uh, wanting to, to cause. Um, and pack sizes, 10 and 200 litres, and uh, for the dawn it's 20s and 125 kilos. Um, one of the other things is that uh, Equilibrium Biologicals just doesn't do slug and snail products. It's actually one of our uh, minor ranges, um, but uh, I guess I'll have an opportunity to talk about that later on. Nigel, do you want to talk about it from a grower's perspective? Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm Nigel Greenwood, um, uh, arable, biological arable cropping in Southbridge, and I'm incorporating genetic principles into my system. Um, so I've been using the Iron EDTA for three or four seasons uh, with good sound results. Um, I usually start monitoring before sowing. If slug pressure is there, I'll, I'll apply between six and ten kilos of the the dawn, um, depending on slug numbers. Um, I run 26 metre tram lines and I use a CDAC bait spreader and I get a good even coverage to my 26 metres, which works well. Um, I've also I've used the liquid slugging product once um, and it was a follow up treatment on wheat, so in uh, May, June 2020. Uh, it was no till ex clover. Uh, I used 8 kilos of dawn post plant pre emerge. Um, and then the numbers spiked again three or four weeks later um, and I applied one litre of slugum and 200 litres of water and it was the, the downside was I had to be out there at 11 o'clock at night um, to, to actually contact the slugs but um, yeah great result and that was a cost of about $23 a hectare so yeah I could, I could afford to get out of bed at that time of night for, that, for, that, for those dollars um, I was told that if I used 100 litres of water, I could probably get that rate down by half to 500 mils with the same result, mm -hmm. uh, which would take it down to a $12 treatment, not including my time, of course. Um, so yeah, that, that treatment, that follow-up treatment of the slug and took the numbers that I had, were they spiked up to between 30 and 35 slugs per square metre, and I dropped them back down to two to four slugs per square metre, and that was the last slug treatment I needed for that crop. Um, I was warned by the Equilibrium Rep um, that it does have uh, high propellancy, propellancy action and that I should just keep a monitor on the crops outside the target area because the slugs potentially could move out of that into the, into the treatment areas so I did activate turf grass on one fence line so I made sure I, I baited that, that fence line. But um, yeah, so that's, that's me from a grower's point of view. So one of the things that the growers have been doing around Pukekohe area, for example, especially the Michigan growers that they're really worried about with holding periods, is that they will bait with dawn around the outside of the blocks and then they will spray dawn, uh, spray, sorry, spray slugging on the inside of the blocks um, and it will actually drive all of the slugs out to the bait. So, so they've got a total green solution um, without using you know, um, any uh, toxic baits um, to control these slugs and snails. So it's, um, it works extremely well and it's very, very cost effective, which is obviously one of the most uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, important factors for growers these days. I, I got the impression with some of your slide, slides that the slugs have to, do they actually have to be covered in the spray or can they can you spray it on the crop and they they take it up when they crawl over the crop so you are very astute so um, there's two, two modes of actions um, so uh, when Nigel says that he got up at 11 o'clock and, and I'd certainly you know that's commitment and a half but that's the commitment of the grower I suppose 
Um, the long and short of it is, if you want to get, if you want to get that sort of, you know, uh, removal of the mucous membrane, then you'd want the product to directly uh, touch the slug, and so you want to be sort of spraying it when the slugs are operating. But the really benefit is that um, is that there's a very high degree of repellency. So wherever you've sprayed, the the moss, the slugs or snails will not actually go back onto. So they will actually be driven out of the block and go to your neighbour's place, and it's now his problem. If it's a big field, I mean, I'm told, like, I learned the other day that slugs move, can move three metres a, a day. If you've got a, a field that's 500 metres yeah. wide, yes. Yes. they're not going to travel all the way to the outside. Right. So, so what up the 11 o'clock at night, James. <laughs> So no, what do they, what no, do they, not, not, not quite. So, so what do they do? You know, they, they, will actually, they will actually not feed on the product or go anywhere near it. In actual fact, in actual fact we've had a whole bunch of slug trials um, and, and commercial trials where we've actually watched the behaviour and all of the slugs have committed suicide. So they prefer to starve themselves to death than actually go anywhere near the product. So will they almost stay where they are then and just stop feeding? They, they will retreat and uh, in most in situations where we've had to put a camera on everything and we use it inside uh, Tupperware containers to obviously maintain the moisture and then spray the material um, where, the, where uh, there's not a preferential uh, test going on they will actually crawl into the furthest part away of the container that we have crawl up into a ball and die. One more question. One more question. Yes. Um, could you make a comment? I've tried EDTA baits in the past compared to the good health of it. Yeah. And two different scenarios. One was applied to a wheat crop when they were literally growing up, driving up the flag leaf. And yes. The flag, and we and put your, your EDTA bait on. It went noise the next day. And some smoke all got driven down the bottom of the canopy, driving around up in the wheat, eat the bait, crack it up. I thought these things were great. The next year, I then used them on an autumn, on clover, seed crop, trying to establish very thin, very small, and I baited it three times with the line baits, and had no joy until I used them totally. Okay. Could you make any comment on the difference between those two scenarios? Because it's a very different scenario where you go, I've got nothing else to eat like the bait, versus another young clover. Yeah. I think it probably is what you've just suggested, is that they've had no other, no other choice. Um, and when it comes down to baits, it all, it's about you know what carbohydrates you're actually using to attract the slug. Um, so it could be the fact that whatever bait you were using um, didn't have um, it didn't have the appropriate uh, attractants to it, or enough sort of carbohydrate-based attractants to actually bring the slug to it. That, that, that's the only thing that I can think of. The other interesting factoid. Um, that most people don't know is that where slugs have been feeding, um, another slug will not feed on it. So if you've got a very, very large bait, um, such as you know the extruded baits, like that for example, now a lot of these will actually have quite a lot of uh, um, synthetic compound on them and far more than you need to control one slug. So if you get one slug coming along and chewing on that, and you know 90% of the bait remains, no other slug will come along and eat that. Most of our, um, uh, all of our baits have enough uh, product on it to actually be, uh, to kill one slug, because there's no point having any more than that. So I think there could be some mechanism as well. But I mean, I'm quite, quite happy to, uh, for our guys to be in contact and see whether you know, we can find a resolution for you. Thank you. Very fierce about time.